Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now, so coupling function formulation is the topic um, and uh, now uh, we will consider a general reaction okay? and a general reaction but a one step reaction because it is though it can be applied to multi step reaction it is easy to understand in terms of a overall one step reaction. So, a general one step overall reaction uh, overall one step reaction is nothing but this one i is equal to 1 to n if you remember our formulation from the kinetics class m i goes to summation i is equal to 1 to n nu i double dashed times m i okay? and then the, the species independent reaction rate which was omega is given by the species consumption rate w i divided by capital w i which is the molecular weight of the species nu i double dash minus nu i dashed. Now, if you have any confusion with this formulation, you can just go back to the kinetics theory, uh, the, the chemical kinetics class and just take a look and uh, get uh, refreshed. Whereas, this guy is nothing but B t to the power of alpha exponential of minus E a by R 0 t. This part is the reaction rate constant k times the law of mass action that is depends on the continued product of the species concentration raised to the stoichiometric exponent c j nu j dashed. Okay. Now, if we consider the distinct specific formulation okay, and uh, um, which was uh, and uh, got get the species uh, conservation equation that was this is C p i the distinct specificate whereas d i j is equal to d that was the statement of the species specific uh, distinct specific formulation. So, this was the species conservation equation was dou rho i dou t plus divergence of rho v vector species consumption or production rate and that becomes when you apply sorry when you apply this onto here the left hand side. So, this is once again convection term, this is the species diffusion term. You see the characteristic diffusivity comes to rho d is equal to the molecular weight of the species i times nu i double dash minus nu i dash times the species independent reaction rate omega. Now, now what we can do is that we can define a stoichiometrically weighted mass fraction. Now, we will use some non-dimensional parameters because uh, these non dimensional parameters as you see will be make our life much simpler in terms of the analysis. It will immediately you know, imme immediately it will look a little complicated and it will not be clear why we are actually doing this kind of non dimensionalization, but later you will see that when you do this kind of a non dimensionalization the equations become very simple and solution just will involve one or two three one or two steps. And so, um, the equations become much more simpler to, uh, to, 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 uh, to solve and uh, of course, uh, it becomes much more insightful. So, y i tilde we define is the non dimensional stoich or, or stoichiometrically weighted mass fraction is given by 1 by sigma i n y i divided by y n at a boundary. What is y n b? I will define sigma i n immediately, but before that y n b is the species mass fraction of an nth species which is a reference species at a boundary of my domain. 
what I'll, I'll I'll come to this when we will consider a specific example, which is at the domain boundaries where this thing is essentially known and fixed. So that is why we define it at the boundaries. Of course, you need to know the boundary conditions to solve it. So it must be known at the boundaries. Okay. So where a sigma i n is equal to is equal to molecular weight times thus the stoichiometric uh, coefficient difference divided by the same for the nth species which is the reference species. Okay. So, this is the thing. So, now when you put this into this what we get is nothing but we get we can write in terms of an operator d rho d t this is the operator actually not the full thing rho v there is a convection term plus operating on a quantity any quantities okay and uh, this can be actually operating on y i tilde and that is, is equal to w n whereas, so this is what we have obtained from the species conservation equation. Okay. We took the species conservation equation or in the distinct uh, specific it formulation, we applied this non dimensionalization of y i tilde is nothing but y i by y n at the boundaries which is known divided by 1 by sigma i n. Now, sigma i n is nothing but w i divided by nu i double dash minus nu i dash divided by w n nu n double dash minus nu n dash. Okay. And then if we apply this these two things in the distinct specific formulation in the species conservation equation we arrive at this thing. Okay. So, this is in an operator form which we can write it as this L d y i tilde is nothing but w n. Of course, because of the coefficients in the front now w n changes and w n is nothing but this thing. Okay. Now, this was the species independent reaction rate and all these things arises because of the non dimensionalization. You should I mean it does, does not look at all uh, complicated. You should just take the equation and just do these things yourself and then it will become as clear as possible. It will become very very clear. But then you see that now we can write this full thing. The thing is that whereas this is the our operator L d this bracket whatever is in the bracket which is operating on essentially this guy this y i tilde and that is equal to w n. So, that we can write this form essentially. So, now we can because this is true for any species w i. Now, the advantage that you see here is that that we have written this operator this d rho the operator is d rho partial rho, rho t operating on y i plus the divergence of rho v vector minus rho d divergence operating on y i is equal to w n. Now, the advantage is that on the right hand side you do not have a species this species specific uh, uh, the, the species specific reaction rate in the sense that uh, you have a w n which is only written in terms of the reference species. Okay. It is not in terms of the ith species. So, this on the while on the l, l y on the, the left hand side you have an l d y i it is on the right hand side we have a basically a, a cons we basically a, um, a source term which is not dependent on y i i i th species as such. Okay. It will it is dependent implicitly through this thing, but not explicitly. But so what I can do is that I can write another equation L d y j tilde and that is also equal to w n and then we can just uh, subtract. Now, because all this differential uh, differentials that we see are commutative with respect to linear operations that is uh, addition and subtraction I can write L d y i tilde minus y j tilde is equal to 0 because these are just when you subtract them this becomes equal to 0. 
So, now we can basically we have arrived at a conserved scalar which is nothing but this quantity beta I can say that is beta i j okay, which is y i tilde minus y j tilde and this operator L d is equal to 0. So, by this you have basically got rid of the reaction rate term right. So, that is the advantage here all right. So, uh, to just uh, uh, summarize what you have done, done is that we have basically arrived at this uh, we took this was the species conservation equation for constant uh, d that is the specific heat uh, constant specific heat and then we considered this one step reaction and this was our uh, uh, species independent uh, reaction rate. And uh, what we saw here is that uh, that uh, when we write it in terms of this um, uh, we can write this uh, in terms of uh, omega and then of course, uh, this is in a slightly different form and then similarly for j we can write it as like also in omega and then when you subtract these two things it becomes 0. Of course, this year we have not done the non-dimensionalization, but if you do the non-dimensionalization it is actually the same thing. Okay. So, by this we have actually obtained uh, that uh, this B i j is becomes essentially a um, um, conserved uh, scalar and for the reacting flow. So, L this conserved scalar with this operator L B i j is equal to 0. Okay. Now, consequently the fundamental variable is not y i, but a stoichiometrically weighted variable this. So, that is the trick essentially here which we have done. It was the same thing you know when we have did it in the non-dimensionalization which, which you can also do without this uh, non-dimensionalization, but it has to be weighted with a stoichiometric variable and that is what causes this um, uh, removes this, uh, this right hand side on this one. Also as I said that we can also define a non-dimensional fun function like this and also we can define a beta i j to be like y i tilde minus y i j tilde that is what we just shown here. Okay. So, these two are essentially the same things and uh, uh, we can do it in a uh, both way and now the thing is that, uh, but this uh, we got rid for the uh, for the species uh, essentially. Now, for the energy conservation you can actually um, do a similar thing. Of course, the energy equation is little more complex. This is the sensible energy equation where we have a two source terms one from d p d t and from this thing. And now, we can again uh, define uh, another uh, non dimensional uh, uh, quantity that is h s tilde which is equal to h s divided by y n b divided by q c n or t tilde is equal to c p t divided by this thing. Now, y n b is uh, once again the a uh, species mass fraction of a reference species known at the boundaries and what is QCN? QCN is essentially a stoichiometrically weighted um, um, heat release rate. Okay. Mm, so, this is what this uh, uh, thing is and then if you non-dimensionalize P tilde also as rho and T tilde, then we can define another operator operating on a non-dimensional H s tilde and that is given by this. Okay. So, if you add the results of uh, A and D that is uh, uh, the, the previous uh, thing that we have obtained uh, mm, mm, uh, 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 that is uh, 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 this this contains once again W n. So, the if you uh, if you see that this uh, L that is um, that is L D of y i tilde is equal to uh, w n and here from this we get uh, this uh, mm, L of uh, H s tilde is equal to this transient term 1 minus 1 by gamma d p tilde d t minus w n. Okay. Now, if you add these two things what we find is that this uh, this two are actually essentially the same thing. So, we can write it as the operator L. So, y i plus Okay. And if it is a uh, trans, if it is a steady state uh, which is such that dpt is equal to 0. So, then we have this uh, whole thing uh, becomes is equal to 0 and then you have uh, we can define this we can define this full thing as beta i and then you have L of beta i is equal to 0. 
ok. So, this is another uh, when you couple we can uh, using this coupling functions you can essentially couple between your um, your uh, one uh, stoichiometrically weighted or non dimensionalized um, enthalpy sensible enthalpy and your, uh, your non dimensionalized uh, species mass fraction or, or stoichiometrically weighted species mass fraction. Um, of course, species mass fraction itself is a non dimensional quantity, but uh, with this you can uh, when you stoichiometrically weighted you can essentially sum these two to get rid of the W n term that is the source term. And uh, so, uh, as you have seen that this is what we did in a chemical in chemical reacting flows and diffuse system governed by n plus 1 equations. You have uh, L of y i tilde is equal to w n, L of h s tilde is equal to minus of w n if d p d t is equal to 0 and this can be alternatively described as L of beta i that is if we sum these two things y i plus h s tilde is equal to 0 and or L h s tilde is equal to w n. So, this uh, of course, the thing to note here is that uh, if you have n species of course, you have n governing equations and you have 1 um, h s tilde right. So, uh, you have n plus 1 uh, equations actually. So, you can uh, uh, combine between all of this uh, with each species you can uh, sum up this uh, h s and then you can uh, get rid of the species reaction rate term, but then you will still be left with um, this one that is L of h s is equal to minus w n and it should be there because you cannot really if you are solving for a combustion system you cannot really get rid of the reaction rate. It is not physically not possible. So, you still keep it there and uh, this will be used to basically obtain the h s tilde ok. So, with this you can uh, simplify the equation by uh, we can get rid of essentially the source term and, uh, uh, and this uh, coupled. So, each of these uh, beta i's can be solved independently and then after you have solved you solve for this and then you get the complete information about the y i's and the h s tilde s ok. So, uh, this is what we want to say that uh, any equations can be solved for concept scalars of beta i, uh, but the chemical information is essentially then contains in the n plus 1 th equation and then L h s is equal to uh, is equal to minus n which is solved last. Now, of course, so the key assumption here is that we have um, to include that uh, that the diffusivity is equal for all the species that is the uh, this was the distinct specific it, uh, um, thing uh, specific it assumption which meant the diffusivities are equal and if the diffusivities are not equal we could not have solved in this manner. So, that is very important. There are other formulations we need to the, the, so the problem is that as you see that this uh, coupling function formulation requires equal diffusivity or equal unity Lewis number or, or essentially unit Lewis number and uh, there is a local coupling function formulation which uh, we will uh, uh, essentially um, uh, which uh, which means that uh, uh, the local uh, 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 coupling formulation which will show which uh, the, uh, which holds in a very local region in space uh, which uh, which is can which can uh, basically work for uh, different diffusivities and non unity Lewis numbers. So, we will do that ok and we will do that analysis and because that is uh, revealing um, uh, in terms of how basically species diffusion affects this uh, coupling functions. Now, that is also important because in combustion systems this unity Lewis number assumption is not a very good assumption and there are various key processes like instabilities in flames uh, which this is not the thermal acoustic instabilities, but other instabilities like diffusion thermal instability etcetera which is happens only because when the when the Lewis number is below certain region uh, below certain value that is when it is less than unity etcetera. So, um, it is important to uh, understand the concept of uh, non unit Lewis numbers and have uh, coupling function formulations for non unit Lewis numbers. Uh, and the another thing that will come out of is that that um, uh, this will be give you uh, the idea of the local coupling function formulations. So, that is what uh, we shall um, uh, we shall proceed into now and uh, uh, let us will do the uh, local coupling function. Uh, formulations and that we will uh, do the derivations for that. So, uh, uh, the local uh, uh, coupling function um, uh, function uh, formulations uh, the need arises this is the local
formulation okay now uh, uh, the local coupling function formulation the need arises because as we have said that in the previous case the restrictive assumption for arriving at the coupling function formulation was that the diffusivity has to be always all equal the dij is equal to d and also lewis number is equal to 1 right so um, that was a restrictive uh, assumption so what we'll do is now is that uh, that we'll uh, do it only in terms of locally where we will essentially neglect convection neglect the uh, convection in the sense that uh, so uh, the idea is that we will separate the flow into this where the combustion is happening into two parts right so uh, suppose uh, this is a um, this is a pipe uh, or this is a the combustor in which uh, combustion is happening in 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 uh, in this manner in this part so this is your flame right uh, so we'll say what we'll say is that that all these regions, all omega is that is your species production rate or the species uh, generation reaction rate, etc. Mm, species production rate or species consumption rate or the species independent reaction rate. These are all zero here. So only part these are is not equal to zero in these regions. Okay. So we will have uh, when this is equal to zero, we don't need to bother about the the uh, the source term essentially. So it's identically equal to zero, right? So uh, in these regions, why do we need even a coupling function when we know that the reaction rate is zero? We only need to bother about the source term when we know that there is a flame and then it is not equal to zero. So we will only apply the uh, coupling function in this sort of this uh, thin regions. Okay, but in this sort of thin regions, the most important thing is that you see this um, mm, uh, because of the large activation energy, the regions are uh, actually very thin and uh, the flame essentially is very thin and when the flame is thin the temperature rises very sharply in a small amount of in a, in a small region right so um, it's a very compact region and so what we can do is that we can apply the local coupling function the, the coupling function formulation only in this part of the regions and not in this parts because there the omega is uh, this reaction rate is zero itself and what we'll assume is that because the temperature rises in a very short region so if you plot the temperature here in a, and this is the temperature so, if you plot uh, this is your temperature axis and this is the, the, uh, the x axis. So, you will see that the temperature rises very sharply like this right. Uh, so, this, this is a very sharp gradient that you see here. So, when you have a very sharp gradient your higher derivatives will become important as a result the diffusion process become important which is because it appears as a second derivative inside your governing equations whereas your um, uh, uh, the uh, first derivatives which is like convection that is becomes less important. So, we will neglect convection in this region and we will only consider diffusion. So, that is the essence of the, the local coupling function uh, formulation. So, the local coupling function formulation uh, essentially we can apply it because uh, flame is compact because of the large activation energy and um, then uh, we can uh, do it. So, we will consider now this distinct diffusivity formulation okay where do rho partial rho dot t density h s if you remember the distinct diffusivity formulation this was the generic formulation plus divergence of rho v vector h s minus lambda by c p gradient of h s is equal to d p d t pressure term Trans in pressure term minus summation i is equal to 1 to n h i 0 w i. This was the heat release rate term, very important. So, we consider uh, tran, uh, steady state. So, this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, okay. And also, we neglect convection because we consider higher derivatives. Of course, you see that this term has two, this is the second derivative, this is only first derivative, so you neglect here. And this is only within the flame region, okay. So, it is not valid over the entire uh, flow, it is only in the flame region we neglect this. So, the equation that we get is essentially this one. Okay. So, setting all these transient terms to be equal to 0, transient terms to be equal to 0. sorry for that. So, setting all these transient terms uh, equal to 0 and uh, setting convection to be equal to 0 because only we are interested now in the coupling function formulation inside the flame. Outside the flame there is no need for coupling function formulation because reaction rate is itself 0 and so we do not need this coupling. 
So, um, only within the flame we neglect essentially the convection and this is becomes our equation that is it is a balance between your uh, your gradient of uh, second derivative of essentially the H s uh, that is the conduction and, uh, uh, and reaction. Uh, okay. Now, similarly uh, for the species governing equation in the distinct diffusivity formulation this was the equation rho y i plus divergence of so, this is the species, this is a sensible enthalpy. This is the species equation once again transient term, convection term, diffusion term is equal to species production or consumption rate for i is equal to 1, 2 up to n. Of course, we neglect this when because it is uh, we consider steady state, we can neglect this because we consider convection to be not important. So, we arrive at this quantity. Okay. So, now with the same non dimensionalization, okay, that is uh, H s. Uh, uh, is equal to uh, H s tilde is, is equal to H s divided by Q c uh, is, uh, is equal to your uh, uh, H s divided by uh, y n b divided by uh, times Q c n that is this was the normalization if you remember H s tilde is equal to H s okay by y n this is important because this will be required in our next analysis of a flame also q c a non premix flame as such. So, this is the normalization and okay, and if you remember y i tilde is equal to y i divided by y n times 1 by sigma um, this is y n b. this was 1 by sigma i n where sigma i n was given by w i nu i double dash minus nu i dash divided by w n nu n double dash minus nu n dash. Okay. Now, if we apply this normalization, I will just erase this of normalizations. If we apply these normalizations uh, in this equation and this normalization in this equation okay okay what you get essentially is I'll just write it down you get and if you assume that this is is spatially non unit it does not vary in space. Okay. Similarly, this is constant in space does not change in space okay. so that it can take this out of the gradient and you can take this out of the gradient. You get Laplacian of sensible enthalpy non dimensionalized sensible enthalpy is equal to C p by lambda times W n remember that form of W n which we discussed and del square y i by Lewis number of i species is equal to minus C p by lambda w n. So, and the whereas Lewis number of i th species is nothing but lambda by rho C p times d i. Okay. So, as you see that these and these are essentially same things with just with a minus sign. So, we can just add these two things up and define a new quantity beta i to be equal to beta i is essentially h s tilde sorry h s is here it is a superscript not a subscript plus sorry this is tilde y i tilde by this number of i and this gives del square beta i to be equal to 0 right. Laplace equation, right? So you see that with this coupling function formulation, 
and this normalization that is a part of this normalization so you have converted this very complicated set of coupled equations okay of course there has been assumptions that the transient time is zero convection is zero but even then you have converted this whole thing into this very simple laplace's equation right whereas del square beta i equal to 0 and beta i is essentially is equal to conserved scalar. So, I strongly encourage that you do this derivation yourself. You can take a look into the book also. It is basically I followed from Professor Law's book uh, CK Law in uh, Combustion Physics from Cambridge University Press. So, but this will give you a very strong sense of the different balance of the species and the enthalpy that is happening. It might look little bit complicated in um, at first glance, but this is uh, very important because it gives you a full sense of how these things. Uh, how basically the uh, you can form a conserved scalar even, even from non-conserved quantities which are individually not conserved. So, we can add them up and then uh, those when you add them up carefully and with uh, proper weighting and so you can create conserved quantities. The reason is the reason is very simple fundamental the reason is that when you consider as reaction consumption of one means production of another right. So, it is that property that you have utilized and these things are all related. It is not that those uh, species are essentially independent, neither the enthalpy is in essentially independent right. So, um, because of utilizing that we have arrived at this from a very complicated set of equations. So, uh, these are the um, two equations. Uh, first, we essentially got from the full set of equations. Uh, if you remember the from the full set we are uh, we simplified it into this form which is the diffusivity diffusivity form and from that we arrived at this simplified form. We also considered the you know, so this was the um, uh, this was the full uh, complicated form of the sensible enthalpy equation from that uh, by applying uh, the fact that your transient time is 0 and transient time is 0 we applied that uh, we uh, came at uh, and we considered convection to be 0 because um, inside a flame only the steep gradients matter. So, the diffusion terms matter. So, essentially the flame is a balance between your diffusion and your reaction thermal diffusion uh, diff thermal diffusion and uh, heat release rate whereas and then we consider the species uh, uh, equation where uh, uh, we uh, basically considered the transient term to be 0 the uh, and then the convection term to be 0 and once again it become a balance between species diffusion and the species uh, uh, consumption or you know, production. And then we uh, normalize this uh, enthalpy and uh, normalize the species mass fraction and then we arrived at this uh, coupling function which is beta i is equal to Hs tilde plus uh, y i tilde by Lewis number uh, of the ith species and then we arrived at this um, uh, Laplace equation which is a beautiful uh, uh, simplification from these complicated forms. So, ultimately we arrived at this del square beta i equal to 0 ok. And uh, this is a very important thing that we have done and then in the next class what we will do is that we will utilize this to arrive at uh, to, to uh, solve uh, for basically the um, uh, non premix flames. So, this much uh, for the governing equations uh, that is uh, so if you remember we used uh, what we have done in this uh, class of governing in these two couple of uh, or, or these three four classes of governing equations is that we have um, considered the Reynolds transport theorem to, con to convert the conservation loss from a system to a, um, a system that is a packet of fluid moving in space to a control volume through which the packet is moving. And then we arrived at loss for um, uh, for for uh, 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 for um, uh, essentially we have arrived at loss for um, uh, mass conservation, continuity equation, momentum conservation, um, species conservation and uh, energy conservation. And then we have arrived at different terms, we have arrived at constitutive relations which can close these equations and then we have applied different kind of simplifications from so that we can arrive at uh, useful forms of these equations and these useful forms uh, we have again further simplified for distinct specific formulation, distinct diffusivity formulation and then we landed up in a problem because we found that the species equation and the momentum equation and the energy equation was coupled. The momentum equation did not come, uh, we did not explicitly consider because we found that in combustion your uh, pressure is uh, mostly constant. So, we do not need to uh, bother about the um, uh, momentum equations um, as such. Um, species constant in space um, of course, the density changes and the velocity changes, uh, but uh, main equations that we need to consider is the um, is essentially the the species and the and the sensible enthalpy equation. We also arrived at the sensible enthalpy equation by uh, uh, by considering the internal energy equation and then con converting the internal energy equation to specific enthalpy equation the total specific enthalpy equation and then from the specific enthalpy we subtracted the enthalpy of formation uh, to arrive 
get the sensible enthalpy equation and then from the sensible enthalpy equation um, uh, we arrived at further simplifications using the distinct diffusivity of the distinct specificate and uh, then uh, we removed the transient terms and then we considered uh, this uh, uh, then we also ar arrived at a generic uh, coupling functions uh, when uh, 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 when we consider that the uh, that the diffusivities are equal, so when uh, then we can apply it at generic uh, coupling uh, functions uh, for uh, generalized equations when the diffusivities were constant, uh, were essentially same. And then uh, if we then we also argued that in some cases the diffusivities may not be same. So then we arrived at the local coupling function formulation, and for that we argued that the um, uh, for most part of the flow when there is where there is no flame, uh, we don't need to bother about the species we do not need to bother by the fact that the reaction rate couples the species uh, or the product of the omega i that is the species production rate or the consumption rate couples the um, species mass fraction equation with the energy equation that is a sensible enthalpy equation. We do not need to bother about this because there is no flame. So, that becomes active only inside a flame right. So, uh, at thus that parts we can simply set omega i or the w i Mm, to be uh, omega or w i is to be essentially equal to 0, but inside a flame uh, what we do is that mm, where we cannot set this to be equal to 0 because that is where the species is being produced or species is being consumed. What we do is that we argue for the fact that because activation energy is large your know, flame is uh, actually a very thin region is occupies a very thin region in space and uh, if it is if it is contained in a very thin uh, uh, if it is the flame is very thin uh, that is its thickness is very thin it is a very small volume mm, uh, and it is a very thin structure. So, that means uh, which is an artifact of the uh, large activation energy of the combustion reactions. So, uh, but if it is a thin structure it means that the temperature or the species gradients temperature or species gradients uh, are very high there. So, temperature and species change very rapidly inside the flame as a result of which it is only the diffusion process that matter and convection process does not matter as much. So, we neglected convection we considered steady state and we arrived at the simplified equations mm, uh, and this uh, simplified equations for the uh, sensible enthalpy sensible uh, species simplified equation for species and from that uh, again we applied this non dimensionalization of uh, sensible enthalpy non dimensionalization of species and arrived at this uh, simplified uh, Laplace equation for the coupling function beta i. So, that is in a summary what we have done and then we will uh, please remember this coupling function please note it down derive these things which will which will give, give you immense confidence in how the combustion uh, governing equations work and how different parameters work among themselves. I strongly suggest you do the derivations on yourself and then you know, once you are ready um, we will come uh, and uh, discuss about non premix flames using this coupling functions. So, thank you very much.